The shocking images of the civil rights movement all around the nation are forever ingrained in our American history. But what is Houston's story? What happened here? After learning that a fellow student was unlawfully beaten by police, the courageous act of 13 Texas Southern University students set a unique path towards a relatively quiet and peaceful desegregation of Houston. A group of students wanted to do something about it. They said, this can't go on. We can't have people treat us this way. We are just as much a citizen as anyone else. And that plan was to make that first sit-in on March 4th, 1960. We started at the campus, at the flagpole. Reverend Lawson said a prayer for us, and uh, we said the Pledge of Allegiance, and then walked down Cleburne Avenue. And we got to Alameda. Wine Garden was on the other side of the street. They filed into a store called Wine Gardens and sat down at the lunch counter to be served as equals, knowing they would not be. The 13 that actually made that first march were not the only ones in line, but we were the first ones to go in. Halcyon Sadbury Watkins knew that this was the right thing to do. That young lady that's looking very stoic and strong, that is her. I always felt that I don't need to be treated like this. This was the moment that would change the course of history in Houston. And we sat there, and we sat there. It's our time. Inspired by the sit-in, droves of TSU students joined the protest, and demonstrations continued at lunch counters across the city. They were determined that they were going to continue to fight for equality and for justice. And so we started going down on Maine and Elgin to uh, Walgreens. Well, what is the occasion for this uh, sit-down strike here? It's a pity that in the 20th century, with all of the major problems of the world, I, as an American, can't sit in a supermarket lunch counter and have lunch. Rather than serve the black students, many lunch counters preferred to simply close. The students, they were very frustrated, and as a result, they just continued to do what they thought was the right thing to do. They were relentless. Then we decided we were going downtown. Politicians threatened to arrest the students if they continued. Customers and employees hurled insults at them. Faced with opposition on all fronts, they never responded with violence. The message really wasn't being heard, they felt. But what they didn't know, there were a group of businessmen working behind the scenes because they didn't want Houston to end up like what happened in Alabama with dogs and people with water hoses. Quentin Meese, along with white business owners here in the city of Houston, got together, came up with a plan to actually desegregate Houston quietly. And the students didn't know about it. While the sit-ins continued, black and white city leaders secretly strategized a way to avoid a violent opposition, which would tarnish Houston's image. What happened in Houston uh, was very different from what happened in other places. The plan was to have several downtown lunch counters agree to simultaneously integrate, with the promise that the news stations, newspapers, and radio would not publicize the story. Known as the blackout, this agreement created much controversy later. They managed to convince them that for the greater good that you shouldn't cover, you know, these stories, and they went along with it. After the agreement, more than 70 lunch counters began serving black customers just a few months after TSU's first sit-in at Wine Gardens. 
The school board has apparently canceled this evening's meeting. Will you go ahead? Well, that's a typical move. Yes, we will go ahead. We will not be stopped. Gaining support from more city leaders, such as Reverend William Lawson, black and white Houstonians continue to demonstrate for the opening of more public facilities. Two years later, a second blackout took place, leading to the opening of several hotels, including the Rice Hotel downtown. Houston didn't get the coverage that many of the other cities did. Unsatisfied, the students pressed on. Knowing that the world's eyes would be on Houston, they plan to disrupt an internationally televised downtown parade celebrating a NASA milestone. NASA was coming in to have the parade, and we had placards, and we had everything ready to show the world what Houston was really like. With the students on standby, black business leaders used the opportunity to convince white leaders to open up restaurants and theaters. Wanting to avoid humiliation for Houston, a call was made to expand integration at the 11th hour, just as the students were about to protest. The parade went off without incident. And you see the applause from this crowd that we have lining the main street of Houston, Texas. That is a testament to the type of people that are here in the city of Houston. They could actually work together and they could get some things done. And as a result, Houston did ultimately desegregate. The courageous act of TSU students was the catalyst for black and white business and city leaders to negotiate a plan to integrate. Houston was changing for the better. It didn't happen without opposition or without arrest, but it did happen in a rather peaceful and quiet manner. In 2010, a Texas Historical Commission marker was established to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Houston's first sit-in. This was something that reminds us of what those courageous Texas Southern University students did on March 4th, 1960. It has been an incredible impact that changed this world. It changed Houston and it made all of us better. My daughter, she looked at me and she said, I'm so proud of you. And I said, I'm so proud of what we did to make this a better Houston and a better world.